My lab is interested in um, trying to understand how the brain adapts to a changing environment, what the changes in the brain are when we learn something. And we thought that maybe these cells, which are uh, sitting around in the brain just waiting for, for um, something bad to happen, might actually be involved in the process of learning, helping the connections between neurons change. And that's exactly what we found. Um, I found that microglia um, specifically um, target to, to these um, synapses. In fact, most of the microglial processes were contacting dendritic spines and axon terminals, which are synaptic structures. Um, involved in the, the communication of information in the brain. And um, actually, something that was very surprising is that their interactions were changing with uh, the sensory experience. Uh, so when animals were exposed to complete darkness for one week, uh, there were more of these contacts between uh, the microglial processes and the dendritic spines. So for example, on this picture, um, we can see many, um, many elements, uh, for example, dendritic spines, uh, axon terminals, um, and astrocytic processes. And in this case, um, the axon terminals are directly touching this microglial process, um, as well as um, the, the astrocytic process. So, all of these elements uh, directly interact one with another, um, which is very surprising. Um, and this is observed not in pathological condition, but in the healthy brain. And it suggests a new role for these microglia in um, synaptic um, modification and um, elimination um, in the context of plasticity. Well, really, microglia are largely studied by pathologists, people who study um, the brain when it goes bad. So very few people have thought about what microglia might be doing in the normal brain. So neurobiologists who study normal brain function have, been, uh, have not been considering microglia at all. So I think this would come as a surprise both to the neuroimmunologists who study brain disease and also to the uh, people who study synaptic plasticity, brain changes uh, in normal learning um, that these cells are involved. Neurons are the cells that have been the most studied because they're the ones who actually communicate with one another, do electrical um, communication, and um, change in response to a stimulus um, in the outside world. But um, there are lots of other cells in the brain, like the microglia, the astrocytes, and the oligodendrocytes, that all have thought to have supporting functions that help neurons carry out what they're doing. And in fact, it's becoming clear that these cells have even more of a role than initially um, expected and might be very much involved in very basic processes of brain function and brain plasticity. We've been doing a lot of imaging, so we can actually visualize the microglia. We can look at what they're doing inside the brain. And um, by labeling these, uh, these microglia specifically with a fluorescent dye, we can follow them and they're very fine processes. They make, um, they have uh, uh, offshoots from the cell body that are very, very fine and they're constantly moving. And that's been thought to be their way of looking for a site of injury inside the brain. But we find that as they're actually moving with these very fine processes, they're touching the synapse, which is the point of contact between neurons where neurons communicate. Brain plasticity is a very broad term. It relates to any change that goes on inside the brain to alter brain function. And largely, it's a consequence of the interaction between the brain and the animal's environment. So when an animal needs to adapt to a new situation or learn something new, the brain will undergo changes in which the neurons change the way they talk to one another and the way they process information. Throughout my graduate studies, I was doing electron microscopy, and I thought it, it, it was so great because uh, in contrast with uh, fluorescence microscopy and to photon, in this case, you can see all the different cells. You don't um, always need label to look at them. Um, Actually, um, you can look at all the cell types. Uh, they are all there, and you can see how they interact one with another. Uh, I think it's fascinating. and. It um, gives us um, the opportunity to, uh, to understand what they are doing, um, how they are interacting, and what is their role.